What a day, what a day. I see Premier Four smiling already and Vic and uh, what a day everyone. I don't know how you feel, but this is a great day for Ontario, great day for Loyalist Township, great day for Canada. Uh, I am excited. I was uh, watching you, Matthias, and remembering, like you said, the number of phone calls, text messages, and everything we've done together. And today, here we are. So bonjour tout le monde. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today is, uh, is yet another important milestone as we continue to position Canada as the leader of choice uh, and as a global EV supplier. And before I go even further, let me uh, acknowledge a few people. Uh, Premier Ford, uh, first, it's always a pleasure to be with you, I would say, uh, uh, Premier, because every time we're together, it's about jobs, it's about growth, it's about opportunities. And we are really together building Ontario as an economic powerhouse. So I want to acknowledge in front of everyone here, and you said it, Matthias, the role of the Premier was uh, really key in making sure that we achieve that today, and we should all be proud of what we have achieved together yet again. We have demonstrated to the world that we could be the most attractive jurisdiction. Trust me, when I first met Matias, he needed a bit of convincing. Uh, uh, but now uh, we are here today, and it's a great pleasure to be all together. Uh, to my friend Vic Fideli, uh, I could not think of best ally, Vic, uh, to attract uh, generational investments in this country. I think when history is going to be written, uh, you know, we, you have done amazing work for this country and for the province. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, we're just getting started, by the way. So uh, just watch us for the next few months and few years. There's a lot uh, that we're going to be doing together, but today is a great accomplishment. And Matthias said uh, the teamwork we have done, I think uh, it, it provides a lot of confidence to investors when we speak with one voice. And, and that's what we've done, and I'm very proud uh, we have achieved that. Let me say a few words to Mark Gerritsen. I think my colleague Mark Gerritsen, which is the MP for Kingston and the island. Uh, Mark, as you know, is a bit, big, it's a bit taller than me. He's a, he's a real force of nature. And, and I want to thank him, or at least in the news tonight, he's going to see that. Uh, how many times he talked to me, Mayor, about this project, you could not believe. Every time I walked down to question period, he was around and making sure that I would remember. So I want to thank him uh, on behalf of everyone here today. He's been uh, playing a big role. And I also want to say hello to Shelby Cramp Newman, which is the local MP, which just happened to sit just in front of me in, in Parliament. So I, I'm giving her uh, uh, a shout out uh, today. Matias, I went back to our first message and I look at back and it was on January 10, 2022 at 7.26 a.m. And, and so I want to say thank you to your vision, thank you to your leadership, and thank you also to your personal involvement. Uh, because I know you had a choice, and the fact that you selected Ontario and that you selected Canada as the base for your North American operation is a huge vote of confidence. And you know, when we started, you and I, with Vic and Premier Ford, uh, this was not, nothing was taken for granted. Now, you know, Bloomberg ranked Canada second in the world for the battery ecosystem, but when we started, we were just getting there. And, and thanks to people like you who have trusted us and now I've established your, your uh, headquarter, and now not only headquarter, but your production for North America and Canada it is a big uh, testament. And I want to say, uh, Matsumoto-san, thank you for uh, being with us and to our friends of BMW. Uh, not only I tried to convince you, Matias, but I went to your customers uh, to convince them to convince you. So this was really a team effort uh, to make sure you would come in, in, in Ontario and, and in Canada. Uh, mayor, uh, where are you, Mayor? I can't see you. I hear you are, Mayor. Listen, uh, you've been a good partner as well, and I want everyone in town to know that you've been a, a partner of choice. And when, when we did that, and, and your role was very key because they were looking for a site. And if anyone wants to see what a multi-billion dollar smile looks like, just look at the Mayor and you'll see what a multi-billion dollar investment does uh, to a smile. Uh, this is going to be transformational to Loyalist Township to the community and I would say even the whole region. Uh, and that's why we're so proud that we have been able to achieve that. Um, Ambassador, uh, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur, c'est un plaisir de vous revoir. Merci d'avoir, uh, de vous être déplacé pour l'occasion aujourd'hui. You're right, there's a lot of good things going on between Belgium and Canada and thanks for your work on that. Um, to Chief, I wanna say thank you, Chief. Uh, your involvement and, and obviously your blessing put us in the right space in our mind to look at the future look at future generations, because this is a gift for future generation. We decided with the Premier and, and Vic to invest because we knew 
that what we're building here, future generation will look back and say, uh, we enter into the technology of the future, providing jobs, opportunities, and at the same time protecting our land as we go into uh, greener industries. So we're very pleased uh, to uh, have you with us. And finally, I just want to say to the some 600 uh, workers that are going to be joining the Umicor family. I know many of you in Belgium, some of you in Canada, but uh, Premier will recall, I always say thank you to all the workers. Uh, it's thanks to your knowledge, it's thanks to your expertise and talent uh, that we can really attract uh, significant investments like that. Believe it or not, the first thing that Matthias asked me was not money, uh, but he asked me to confirm that we had talent. And this is very easy when you're a Canadian minister to say there is a lot of talent here and that's why you came to Canada. And I see Mark Gerritsen in the back, so you made it, my friend. You're taller than about everyone, so it's easy to see. Uh, but I just want to say, again, thank you to all the workers uh, who are going to join the, the family. On sait tout le monde, on le voit, il y a une véritable révolution mondiale qui est en cours dans le domaine des véhicules électriques. Et alors que de plus en plus de pays se bousculent pour attirer des grands joueurs du secteur automobile de demain, je pense qu'on peut dire que le Canada se démarque, et je le disais avant, même Bloomberg nous met maintenant deuxième euh, dans, le, dans le classement mondial pour l'écosystème des batteries qu'on a bâti. And over the past two years, we have built a world-class battery supply chain, attracting some of the world's leaders in the auto and battery industries. You just think about Volkswagen. Uh, you just have to think about Stellantis, Ford, GM, uh, which have partnered with some global companies like, obviously, Umicor, LG, POSCO, EcoPro, and SK. The world is looking at us, as you know, at Premier. I'm, I'm always smiling with Vic and, and, and the Premier to say all our phones are ringing. You know, everyone wants to come in Canada, which is a good thing. Uh, because these companies realize that uh, uh, they just don't wake up and decide to come to Canada. There's been a lot of work. Uh, but I would say that they realize that Canada offers talent, uh, Canada offers ecosystem, Canada offers critical minerals, Canada offers renewable energy, and Canada offers access to markets. And I think this is what we put on the table that have been uh, centerpiece. That's why we have seen companies like Humicor uh, choosing to come to Canada. Ces entreprises ont choisi le Canada parce que la main d'œuvre est simplement, pour dire, excellente dans le domaine, évidemment, des véhicules électriques. Ces entreprises ont choisi le Canada parce qu'on a une abondance d'énergie propre et de minéraux critiques. Et ces entreprises ont choisi le Canada parce qu'on a un accès inégalé au marché international. And you will recall, I told you, we have access to 1.5 billion consumers on a preferential basis. And it's for the same reasons that Humico has chosen Ontario and loyalists uh, to establish its North American hub. And what they're going to be producing here, for folks who are watching at home, uh, is going to be uh, supplying an estimated 800,000 EV vehicle per year. So this is very significant. Mayor, there'll be a piece of loyalist township rolling in the roads of North America for generations to come. And I think that you should be very proud. And I think everyone deserves a big round of applause for that. It's not every day that you can say that everyone in North America is going to have a piece of Loyalist Township uh, as they roll over. Uh, but as we put uh, shovels in the ground uh, for what will be, as Matthias said, Canada's first PCAM production facility, uh, that's going to fill a critical gap because the vision we had with the Premier and, and Minister and the Prime Minister Trudeau, which I want to acknowledge, uh, was really to have a complete supply chain. So we wanted to make sure that we have all the elements to build the electric vehicle of the future in Canada. And I would say what you're doing, the precursor to cathode active material, was key to make sure that we could, um, that we could build that full supply chain that goes from critical minerals to even recycling. And let me tell you, uh, when I travel to Asia and Europe and they talk to me about St. Thomas, uh, Windsor, or even Bécancourt in Quebec, now it's going to be nice to hear that they're going to be about, they're going to be talking to me about Loyalist Township as well. So Loyalist Township is going to be in the minds of everyone watching today because the auto sector is watching what's happening. And so, um, like I said, we could not have done that without partners like my friends in Ontario. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you, Premier Ford and Vic, uh, for your support, uh, for your dedication, but also for your friendship. Uh, we have demonstrated, and when we work together, everything becomes possible. Today is all about vision. Today is all about possibilities. Today is all about opportunities. So let's seize the moment. Let's be ambitious, and let's build the auto sector of the future right here in Ontario. Merci tout le monde.
Thank you very much, Minister. Imacor is very pleased to have the support of both the Government of Canada and the Government of Ontario in this exciting enterprise. We are very honoured to have the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario. He has joined us today. Please give a warm welcome to Premier Ford. Boy, I, I always joke around. First of all, good afternoon, everyone. It's, it's pretty hard to follow uh, Minister Champagne. I call him the Energizer Bunny, but I, I do, because he just goes, and Matthias, you, you've seen it, right? You, you see the energy, and, and welcome, by the way, and, and Umacore as a whole, and I'm thrilled to be here alongside the number one salesperson for Ontario. I always say, you're number one for Canada. Vic is number one for Ontario. Uh, thank you, Vic. I know you just came back from a long trip selling Ontario, selling Canada, and uh, you're a champion, but it can't be done without the champion locally here, MPP, Rick Breeze. Rick, great to see you. And, and our, our fellow counterparts, our MPs here, and as well as uh, uh, the whole team from Umacore. And uh, Matthias, you, you sent me a nice text last yesterday, and I, I was just looking forward to getting here today to celebrate the groundbreaking of Umacore's massive new facility in Loyalist Township. And this, this can't be put together without the mayor, yourself, uh, your council, and the entire township. And anywhere we've gone, uh, no matter uh, Vic or Minister Champagne, it's always three levels. It's, it's with the municipality, it's with the province, and it's with the federal governments, with the private sector. So everyone is pitched in, and I just, uh, again, I'm, I'm very grateful. But folks, uh, before I, I begin, I just want to acknowledge the ambassador. Ambassador, great to see you. Uh, please come down and pay me a visit down at Queen's Park any time. And, and Chief, thank you. Thank you so, so much. You know, when I was listening to you speak, I thought, what an out-of-box thinker. You're thinking out of, out of the box. You're thinking of jobs and opportunities for your community. And I'm very, very grateful for the relationship with you and our Indigenous partners right across this great province. Because, folks, I can tell you, without the support of the chief and his community, stuff like this just doesn't happen. So thank you again. I'm very, very grateful. And please, Chief, come and visit me down at Queen's Park as well. And a big uh, shout out uh, again uh, with Umacore and thank you for choosing Ontario. You know, we, we always uh, said that we, we don't create uh, businesses government, but between the federal government, municipal and provincial, we create the environment and the conditions for companies to come here and thrive and prosper and grow. And one of the things through Vic's leadership, we've cut over $8 billion, $8 billion of burden off the backs of companies to make ourselves more competitive, to compete against our, our great neighbors, and they are great neighbors south of the border or anywhere overseas, but people are coming by the droves. And I'll tell you a little, little story here, folks. Every night, every single night, I get a message from someone, and that message comes from that smiling guy in that beautiful yellow tie, Vic Fideli. And it's, he doesn't miss it. I'm like It doesn't matter if it's New Year's Eve, if it's Christmas, if it's Easter, Thanksgiving. Every single day, he sends me a quick text message. You know, ABC company per se is coming, and this is what they're investing. This is how many people they're employing. So, again, thank you. And for your, for your tr tremendous vote of uh, confidence to the, the customers here, uh, not only in Umacore, but also in Ontario, we're very grateful. And we've seen a, a growing EV, uh, you know, sector growing to a tune in the auto sector alone, these are pretty staggering numbers. In less than three years, with the partnership of, of the federal government and the province, $26 billion. $26 billion of investment. We're the only jurisdiction in the entire world, just think of this, that have seven of the largest auto manufacturers right here in Ontario. And I just can't wait for BMW to open up as well. I have to give the plug, right? I'm the salesperson. <laughs> and, the, the number, and the reason, the reason people pick Ontario, not only because we, we have a very attractive offers, but it's the quality of the people. It's the quality of the people that live here. It's our number one selling feature. 
some of the greatest colleges and universities I'll put up against anyone else in the entire world. You know, we, we have a, a new world-class facility which will encompass right here, if you look out there, is 350 acres. That's an amazing site. And produce enough battery materials, as, as you were saying, uh, Francois, uh, for 800,000 electric vehicles every single year. And the plan is going to create 600 uh, direct jobs. And I always say in the auto sector, uh, there's seven spin-off jobs to every, every one job that we see here. That's 600 new jobs and right across the, the province it's going to be multiples of, of thousands of jobs. In fact, it's going to boost the economy and activity across mining, auto, manufacturing sectors and the service sector as well. And that's why today I'm pleased to announce that our government is supporting Umacore's investment with nearly $425 million. So, you know, that, that's just your bonus this year alone, Vic. So you'll be foregoing your bonus, right? All, all together, all together in investments from Umacore and the federal and provincial governments will total more than $2.7 billion. That's, that's a big number. These investments will strengthen our homegrown electric vehicle supply chain and will help ensure that the cars of the future are made in Ontario by Ontario workers from start to finish and a complete supply chain. As you heard the minister say, we, we want to make sure that every single company uh, is here within the supply chain. Our government has a plan to be a world leader in electric vehicles and battery revolution. All we say, we're an economic powerhouse in North America. We do approximately $460 billion of two-way trade with our largest trading partner. Now, if we were a standalone country, and I never recommend that, by the way, if we were a standalone country, we'd be the U.S.'s third largest trading partner. The only difference between ourselves and number one and number two, Mexico and China, there's massive trade deficits with the U.S. with both those countries. Ours is pretty well split down the center. And we're the number one trading partner to 19 states, number two to nine other states. And we're building a made in Ontario supply chain second to none. That's connecting the province's critical minerals and clean steel to automakers and battery manufacturers across Ontario. And over the past three years, as I mentioned, it's over $26 billion. And, you know, not to give out numbers, Vic, because I won't do that, but there's tens of billions of dollars more coming down the road, excuse the pun, but we're coming down the road with investments, with partnerships with the federal, municipal, and provincial governments. We're competing against other U.S. states like Michigan that we just signed an MOU with, and Ohio, and we're winning. Folks, I spent a lot of years in the U.S. We had our facility in Chicago and New Jersey. I know a lot of great uh, Americans. And when I call them up, you know, I, I have to, I, I barely wipe the smile off my face. Uh, I love them, but they're saying, what the heck are you guys doing, you know, to attract so many companies? When I met with the, the governor of Nevada or the, the Congress folks from Arizona or signing the MOU with Michigan all within the last few weeks and, and meeting with uh, a lot of different groups in the U.S., they're just, Wow. That, that's, the, that's the word. Wow, I can't believe you're attracting these many companies. So I think we're the, the envy of the world, the envy of North America, but it doesn't happen alone. I keep reinforcing, you know, without the partnerships, I wouldn't even be standing up here on the stage. Companies like Umacor are choosing Ontario because of our competitive business environment, as I mentioned, cutting $8 billion of burden off companies, not once, every single year. Our skilled workforce, access to critical minerals, and I think everyone's heard of the Ring of Fire, the hundreds of billions of dollars that are sitting up at the Ring of Fire, no, no matter if we have the cobalt or the nickel or the lithium, whatever is needed, we have it up there, and I know the world wants it. And major markets also in North America are looking right here for our critical minerals. Friends, with great partners, with great companies, we're revitalizing our auto sector and making Ontario an auto manufacturing powerhouse bigger and better than ever before. And the numbers speak for themselves, as I mentioned. We're producing, and I think we got to update these numbers, uh, Vic, because it says 1.2 million vehicles every year. I think it's a lot higher than that, and it will be as we move forward. 
The automotive uh, sector contributes an amazing 11.6 billion to our GDP and provides over 100,000 uh, direct jobs and hundreds of thousands of indirect jobs. And folks, as you said, you took my line, friends, but I, I agree, Minister, you know, we're just getting started and we are just getting started. We're going to continue to attract even more investments and we're going to keep investing in Ontario made products and technologies and innovations right here. Together, we're leading the electric vehicle revolution. I want to thank you again to Umacor and your whole team for their investment, for expanding your footprint right here in Ontario, and for inviting me to speak today. I can't wait to come back and cut that ribbon. And uh, thank you, and God bless each and every one of you. Now, I think my number one salesperson is coming up, but I'll let you introduce the champ of all champs. Thank you. Thank you, Premier Ford. Now, actually, before our next speaker, we are going to have a sneak peek of this innovative, first-of-its-kind facility. So let's take a look. Yes, it is impressive, isn't it? It's really going to transform this part of Loyalist Township. Now I'd like to introduce Ontario's Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade, the Honourable Vic Fideli. Please welcome Minister Fideli. Well, I got to tell you, it's awfully hard to follow Francois and really, really hard to follow Premier Ford. This is going to be a, a tough one. But hello, everybody, uh, and all of the distinguished guests who are here. <clears throat> this really is a yet another historic day, a uh, once in a lifetime, once in a generation investment. What a great day for Umicor, and what a great day for Ontario. And as well, what a great day for Bath, Napanee, Kingston, and the whole region. So congratulations, uh, as Francois would say, for Team Canada. This is a big win for Team Canada. So we all worked very closely together. Uh, as you heard, it is a $2.7 billion investment, and now it is a reality. We're making history today. This represents North America's first industrial-scale cathode-active materials plant. And as you've heard as well, this investment marks the creation of 600 uh, new, globally coveted, good-paying jobs for the region, including 1,000 jobs throughout the construction period and 700 co-op positions for students as the years go on. This project will make Umacore one of the largest private employers in all of eastern Ontario. 
and this is another tremendous positive step forward in building up Ontario's end-to-end -end electric vehicle supply chain. So again, thank you, Umicor, for choosing Ontario. And it's really been a pleasure working with you, with Francois, with the Premier. It's been a wonderful partnership that remains strong and will continue to grow. Uh, our first meeting uh, in Brussels was in the summer of 22, uh, and, and Geert was, uh, was with us. It was a wonderful uh, opportunity to see you, uh, Geert. And uh, I know Kurt and Geraldine are not here today, but it really was an exciting time to, uh, to make things happen. Uh, we knew that, you, that Ontario had absolutely everything that Umicore was looking for. Yes, it was uh, the, eco, uh, the EV ecosystem that we had, our critical minerals in Ontario's north, manufacturing muscle in Ontario's south, the clean green electricity, the, the coal-free green steel, the only jurisdiction with all of these automakers here, 700 parts companies, 500 tool and die and mold makers, 400 connected and autonomous vehicle companies, but most importantly, what Umicore saw was our talent a talent, our workforce, and the success of all of the policies that the Premier talked about a, a minute or so. We showed you, McCor, how we've lowered the cost of doing business in Ontario by $8 billion. We showed them that we produce 65,000 STEM grads every year here in Ontario, 24 colleges and universities that offer automotive programs, and by choosing Ontario, they would be in the heart of the new EV revolution. So thank you very much. Uh, now that Umicor is a key part of that reality, we want to say thank you to all of you and enjoy the rest of the day.